Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Commander Score Studio. Welcome to the show. So on today's episode, I've got a very exciting DAC tack for you on a commander that is, well, um, kind of grossly awesome, kind of crazy, kind of out there, and kind of a big deal. So with all that said, let's jump into the commander. And that commander would be the Myco Tyrant, a star star elder fungus to trample for one black and a green. And there's a lot of text, so here we go. Power toughness each equal the number of creatures you control that are fungi and or saplings. At the beginning of your end step, create X11 black fungus creature tokens with this creature can't block for X the number of times you descended this turn. And as a reminder, you descend each time a permanent card is put in your graveyard from anywhere. And a reminder on that reminder permanent card, unfortunately, but also fortunately, means, hey, non-token essentially. Because for some reason, yes, even though a token can be a permanent, and it also really is a card that you can physically pick up and hold, it probably, for some reason in the rules, is not specified to be a permanent card for whatever reason. So keep that in mind. So yeah, this can make tokens, but those tokens will not add to that descending. That being said, again, descending counts when uh, permanents are put from anywhere into your graveyard. And there's a lot of ways to get a lot of things in your graveyard very quickly, very effectively, very efficiently, very easily to make an absurdly large fungus army in absolutely no time. And I just messed up right there because I think it's actually fungi more army, right? there. I'm sure there's a lot of decks out there like, hey, it's a fun guy. <laughs> My commander's a fun guy. <laughs> Very clever. Anyways, <laughs> on this episode, I'm going to show you exactly how dominant this commander can be, how you can flood the board absolutely no time, take your opponents out in a variety of ways. A very fun commander. I mean, just you could take them out with commander damage with this if you really wanted to, right? It's going to become absolutely massive in absolutely no time. Regardless, this deck is incredibly budget-friendly. Every single card in it, except for the commander, which is still decently budget-friendly, $2.23. Every other card is $0.50 cents or less. Incredibly budget-friendly at $18.82 in total, according to the estimated Moxfield price. Now, keep in mind that might not include, you know, your shipping or basic lands, but you might already have those basics, or you may have some friends, or your LGS has them for you, or you can just buy them in bulk. Regardless, very budget-friendly. Now, let's jump into the tactics. First up, we've got Life on Repeat because, well, again, like I mentioned, whenever we get a permanent card into our graveyard again from anywhere, we get to descend. And therefore, hey, let's mill. Oh, and let's also make it sure that we have a 100% hit rate with mill because every single card in this deck is a permanent. Lovely, isn't it? Codex Shredder, tap for a single one. Just tap, you know, tap, and then all of a sudden, you get to mill one card. Lovely. Also, you can pay five tap and return a card from your graveyard to your hand if you really need to. Next up, Crop Sigil. Begin for upkeep. You may mill a card. We're going to be doing that. We're going to be descending quite a bit. Pay two and a green sacrifice. Return to one target creature, one target land from your graveyard to your hand. Eh, activation requirement. We're probably not going to do that until we actually really need to because we like these repeatable milling effects to descend more and more and more. Again, every single descend, every single milled card essentially, again, is basically a creature token. Next up, Ghoul Caller's Bell. Everyone mills one. Lovely opponents, join us. Then there's one of Vertebrae. We're going to tap it to mill one and also can pay two and tap an exile to show up the five cards from our graveyard to library if we really need to. And again, if we really need to not mill ourselves, which could happen, but we're not going to let that happen because we're also going to use Perpetual Timepiece. Tap to mill two, also pay to exile it, shuffle any of our cards from graveyard in your library. So again, a way to present, our, present ourselves from milling and also a way to essentially get good cards back. Next up, Cemetery Tampering. Hide away five, so get things right in your graveyard right away. Begin of your upkeep, mill three cards. Then if there are 20 or more cards in your graveyard, you play the exile card without paying its mana cost. So hide away again, getting a card off the top, saving it in exile essentially, be able to cast it for free once you get this requirement met. Very easy to do. The rest go on the bottom of your library, but yeah. Free mill every single turn. Lovely. Next up, Crawling Infestation. Mill two cards at your upkeep on top of that. Whenever one or more creatures are putting your grave from anywhere during your turn, you get a 1-1 one, one insect. Triggers only once each turn. So another way to make even more creature tokens. Absolutely lovely. And mill repeatedly. Crawling Sensation, the OG of these. Mill two at your upkeep. When one or more land cards are putting your grave from anywhere for the first time each turn, create a 1-1 one, one insect. Again, that's each turn, not just your own. So if you're milling on your opponent's turns, 
Yeah, you're getting creature tokens too. Moving on, Egon, God of Death. Uh, we don't care about the front side, really. On the back side, we got Throne of Death, the beginning of your upkeep, melee card, pay two in a black tap, exile creature from graveyard, draw a card. So card advantage on top of repeatable mill. Fantastic. I mean, the front side's decent too, but we care about the back more. Moving on, Old Rutstein, one for human peasant for three mana, enters the battlefield or the beginning of your upkeep, mill a card. So again, free mill every single turn. If a land is milled this way, you get a treasure. If a creature is milled this way, you get a one, one. If a non-creature, non land you get a blood token so again all value all the time for you and again with that blood token discarding a you know permanent card in your graveyard which you're going to be able to do obviously with that blood token will also give you a fungus there you go splinter fright is a great one as well star style mental will trample power touch equal to the number of creature cards in your graveyard this can be absolutely massive a huge threat and on top of that game rub keep mill two lovely Next up, let's move on to tactic number two, because we're not done milling just yet. Milled away. We've got some cards that can help us mill, though there is a requirement. Eye Collector, a 1-1 Flying Fairy for a single black mana. When it deals with combination of player, each player mills one, essentially. And, um, yeah, that's very easy for us to get through. Again, it's a low-to-the-ground evasive creature. Get through, and then essentially start milling. Shambling Shell is next. A 3-1 that we can sacrifice to get a counter creature we really need to. Sure. More importantly, though, Dredge 3. So whenever we draw a card, we can replace that draw with this essentially from our graveyard into our hand by milling three cards. So, again, yet another essentially free way to mill. Stinky Dip takes it a step further again as Dredge 5. And also deals combination of creature destroys that creature, which is lovely. Then there's Sewer Nemesis. Enters the battlefield with a player. We're gonna choose ourselves. Power to each equal number of cards in the chosen player's graveyard. So again, an absurd amount of power. Absolutely lovely. On top of that, whenever the chosen player casts a spell, they mill a card. Oh no, I cast a spell. Oh no, I milled a card. Oh no, I made a fungus. Oh no, you're gone. Next up, we've got Hairstrong Kodo. This is hilarious. Tap and untap creature control target player mills one. So, hey, uh, all you fungi that uh, I have made, Tap, mill me for that many. Cool, double up my army, essentially. Oh, do it again next turn, cool, awesome. Oh, by the way, that player, um, yeah, it looks like they're running low on cards in their library. Let's just mill them out, they're gone. So this can be a great engine for you to make an absurd amount of creature tokens and to send an absurd amount, and also a way to say, let's just take players out, let's finish them off. Moving on, Necron, Mono a 7-7 flying and destructible vehicle with crew four, but again, we're not gonna be short on creatures to crew it. Kind of weird seeing fungus just like piloting things though. That's whatever. It is what it is. Whenever it attacks, mill three cards for each creature card mill this way. Make a two-two black necron warrior artifact creature token. Yeah, I got quite a few creatures in this deck. Can help us out a lot. And then finally, Wondrous Crucible, a crazy good card. Permanent you control of ward two. So that's a lot of protection right there for all of our great things. We have end step, mill two cards, and exile a non card at random from graveyard. Copy it. You make cast copy by paying its mana cost. So essentially, again, mill, which is just all we want to do. Protecting, and then also, hey, a uh, free casting of things. Absolutely lovely. Next up, let's move on to tactic number three, though, trash and treasure, because, yeah, outside of mill, we got other ways to take advantage of our permanents hitting the graveyard again from anywhere. Like, you know, Iola's Inference. I love this card. One of my favorite cards ever. Chant for green, green, green. Discard a land card, make a 2 2 green bear. Love that. And yeah, hey, you know what? Now these dead lands that are in your hand, just get rid of them. Put in your graveyard. Make a bear. And on top of that again, you descended. Congratulations. You put a permanent in your graveyard. Next up, Plague Reavers. Speaking of graveyards, a 6-5 beast for just three mana. There's got to be a downside, right? Well, kind of. Behavior and step sacrifice each other creature control. Well, that's a little downside. But also, hey, uh, discard two cards, sacrifice it, choose target opponent, return to the battlefield under that player's control to begin the next upkeep. Hey, you know what's really cool? Me discarding some cards, me descending, me giving you something that makes you sacrifice your entire army. Have fun! Moving on, Grimmar of the Dead. With that army sacrifice, you know what? You're not putting it to good use, so I'm going to. Pay one, tap, discard a card, put a study counter on it. So again, descending. Lovely. Tap, remove three study counters from it, sacrifice it, put all creature cards from all graveyards of Alpha to control. They're all mine. They're all mine. Rise of the Dark Realms, essentially. They're all mine, and I win. Moving on, Scourge Familiar. Discard a card, add black. An absurdly good card. One that's just basically a ritual effect on a body. And again, one that says, hey, you want to descend while also getting free mana? Lovely. Next up, Street Wraith. Speaking of free, cycle it away for two life. 
draw a card. And yeah, again, you descended. Congratulations. Chef and Monitor, cycle it away for three in a green. When you do, search the library, basic land, or a desert, put on the battlefield, then shuffle. So yeah, a great way to ramp on top of cycling and on top of descending. Crows and Tusk are very similar, but essentially, hey, three mana to actually cycle it away. You don't get that land into play, but you do get in your hand, which is quite nice. So there you go. Plenty of different ways to actually descend. So now let's move on to tactic number four, Outland Mall, because we're not done descending just yet. Did you think we we're done? We're not done. Here we go. Lampet of Death's Vigil, a 1-3 Nymph for one and a black. Pay one, sacrifice a creature. Each one loses one life and you gain one life. Here's the thing. We've got plenty of ways to ramp. We'll talk about those here in a bit. We've got plenty of ways to make a lot of mana, and we've got plenty of ways to make an absurd amount of creatures, right? So let's sacrifice those creatures. Let's drain our opponents. And actually, again, if we're sacrificing you know, actual non-token creatures, we're also descending even more. So drain your opponents out. A great finisher for us and a great outlet. A brutal one, though. Oh, my goodness. Mind slash 22 cents for an incredibly brutal card, especially in this deck. Pay a black. Sacrifice creature. Target opponent reveals their hand. Choose that card from it. They discard that card. Sorcery speed only, but still... <laughs> Hey, uh, I, I've got, like, an absurd amount of creature fodder. I've got, like, 40 fungus in play. Let's sacrifice a few. Let's take our opponent's hands, and all of a sudden, they're going to have to top deck to try to stop us. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Have fun. Moving on, Whisper Blood Liturgist. We can also put those fungus to good use with this. A 2-2 Human Cleric for 4 mana. Tap, sacrifice to a creature. Turn target creature card from your grave of the battlefield. Again, we're going to be filling our graveyard in absolutely no time with a ton, a ton of ton of permits, including creatures. Now we just tap, sacrifice to those fungus that we made when we're doing that. Then we say, oh, that really good creature. Let's bring that right back, right into play. An absolutely absurdly good card in this deck. But now we want to do tag number five, the replacements, because you know what? We need to actually dig down into our deck in other ways with, you know, card draw. Dockside Chef, a great one. Pay one of black, sacrifice an artifact creature, draw a card. Again, all these creature tokens that we're going to be making, we can put them into really good use. Sacrifice them, draw some cards, and yeah, we've got some ways to take advantage of them actually hitting the graveyard as well. Vampiric Rites, pay one a black, sacrifice creature, you gain one life, and draw a card, a fantastic effect as well. Of course, Viserys here, sacrifice creature for free, scry one. Absurd amount of ways to just dig down into our deck and say, what do I need? What do I need? And on top of that, obviously, a great free sacrifice outlet when we set ourselves up properly to take our opponents out. We'll talk about those here in a little bit. Calling Deus, a great repeatable sacrifice outlet. Tap, sacrifice creature, get a charge counter on this. Pay one, sacrifice this, draw a card free charge counter on it. So a great way to build that up. We've gone Evolutionary Leap. Oh my goodness, this is so good in this deck. Pay a great and sacrifice creature, reveal card, stop your library to the creature. That goes in your hand. The rest go to the bottom of your library in random order. So again, turning these little fungus creatures tokens into whatever great creatures we hit off the top of our library okay fecundity yeah this is a card that does help out opponents potentially but um here's the thing it's gonna help us out a lot more a champ for three man whatever creature dies the creature controller may draw a card at a certain point that's probably gonna help us out that it's a may because um yeah we're gonna have an absurd amount of creatures in play we can sacrifice them we can draw an absurd amount of cards and we're kind of running low on our whole library thing until we have a way to shuffle it. But yeah, moving on. We got Sanguine Spy, Menace Lifelink, pay one sacrifice creature. Look at the top card of your library. You may put that card in your graveyard. So again, a potential way to essentially kind of like surveil, get rid of it if we don't want it, and also descend at the same time. Or yeah, just keep it on top. Beginning of your end step, there are five more mana values, one cards in your graveyard. You may pay two life if you do draw a card. That's going to happen very quickly for this deck, obviously. Moving on, Woe Strider, basically another vampire. You know, the Sacrifice Scry 1. Lovely. On top of that, ETB is going to be a 0-1 white gold creature token, and we can escape it back out if we need to. Erebos Blackhearted, a 5-6 indestructible god. If our devotion black is less than 5, oh no, it's not a creature. That's okay. What we care about, though, is this. Whenever a creature you control dies, you may pay 2 life if you do draw a card. Again, it does not specify non-token, so therefore... Draw to your heart's content. I mean, to your life's content. You need to have life to do this. <laughs> Pay one to black, though. Sacrifice a creature. Three creatures, minus two, minus one, twelve turns. So we can actually take out creatures with this, too. Valid to say, next up. Pay two, sacrifice creature. Draw a card. Very efficient, very effective. Moving on. Molder Vline Reclamation. My goodness. Enchantment for five mana in total. Whenever a creature, not non-token, whenever a creature you control dies, gain one life, draw a card. An absurd amount of cards drawn with this. An absurd amount of life gain with this. What's not to love? Next up, though, let's go to tag number six, Life Cycle, because, hey, we need some mana to actually do what we want to do. 
And let's take advantage of some, uh, you know, descending while we do that too. Diligent Farmhand, a great card for this deck. A 1-1 one, one Druid for a single green mana. Pay one and a green, sacrifice it, go get a basic and a play tap. Basically, Wayfarer's Bobble on a creature. Then we've got Fauna Fertility. Wayfarer's Bobble on an enchantment. There you go. And hey, here we go. Wayfarer's Bobble, of course. Pay two tap, sacrifice, go to base land and play tap. Absolutely love you. Love you, Wayfarer's Bobble. Next up, we got Wild Growth. Enchant a land, it taps for an extra green. Fertile Ground, enchant a land. It taps for an extra man of any color. Then we've got Milliken, tap Milli card at a colorless. So again, this is basically tap, make a creature token. Yeah, lovely. Then there's Mind Zone, tap for colors, pay one tap, sacrifice, draw a card. Skull Prophet, tap for either of our colors, tap for the top two cards, your library and graveyard, or yeah, hey, in layman's terms, Mill two. Then there's Wolf Will Haven, Enchant Land, whatever Enchant Land, tap for mana, get an extra green. On top of that, pay for an a green, sacrifice it, make a two, two Wolf. So again, we could actually descend with this too. Spring Bloom Druid, sacrifice one land, go get two into play, tapped essentially. So again, descend and also ramp then there's the mending of dominaria first and second lower counters mill two and you can also return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand so a lot of descending there and a lot of value there even more value though with this last part which is basically game ending return all land cards from your graveyard to the battlefield then shuffle your graveyard in your library hey um yeah let's just get all those lands again when you're when your library is smaller than your graveyard you probably have a lot of lands in there you just milled a lot in there so let's get all of them out let's get like 50 lands in play well we don't have 50 in the deck but let's get an absurd amount of lands in play ramp way ahead of our opponents also reset things so we don't mill ourselves out yeah a lovely card for this deck But now we want to do tactic number seven, break stuff and break stuff we shall with Caustic Caterpillar. How cute. Pay one and a green sacrifice search target artifact or enchantment. Canker Bloom, very similar. Pay one sacrifice to an artifact destroy enchantment or proliferate. Very effective, very efficient. Outland Liberator, 822. Pay one sacrifice destroy an artifact or enchantment. Flips over the day bound to the night bound side, 833. Exact same thing. Or also, hey, whenever it attacks, destroy target artifact or enchantment, defending player controls. Then there's Seal Primordium. Sacrifice to destroy target artifact or enchantment. Threshing Brontodon. Pay one sacrifice destroy an artifact or enchantment foundation breaker we can actually just evoke this one out and it's going to be sacrificed etbs destroy target artifact or enchantment never rolls disc if we need a panic button this is a great one etbs tapped and then pay one tap destroy artifacts creatures and enchantment so again a good panic button in case we need it frexian plague lord an incredible free sacrifice outlet for this deck well, okay, first up, tap, sacrifice this, target player, or target player. Target creature gets minus four, minus four until I've turned. Nice, we can take something out. But more likely, we're going to keep it in play because we can sacrifice any creature for free. And target creature gets minus one, minus one until I've turned. Again, we have ourselves set up. We are ready to go. And all of a sudden, we say, oh, yeah, I don't like that creature over there. Let's take that out. And also, I'm going to draw a lot of cards with Mulder and Reclamation and do some more mean things coming up. Because now in Technobrite, we talk about the golden pig of this deck, the number one card ever, 99, which is the Butcher of Malakir. Oh my goodness, an absurd card. Hey, a 5-4 Vampire Warrior flying that costs 7 mana whenever any other creature control dies, each one sacrifices a creature. Here's the thing, it doesn't specify non-token creature. Meaning you make all those fungus and all of a sudden you're like, yeah, I'm going to sacrifice them. Oh, and by the way, every single one I sacrifice, you sacrifice. Essentially, every single one of your creatures is an edict effect waiting to happen. Your opponents will have absolutely no boards. They will have no boards, and you will be like, oh, okay, cool, yeah, my commander's like a 30-30. You're gone. Oh, I'll just send my army of, you know, 30 fungus at you. You're gone. I'll just send all these things at you. You're all gone. You've got nothing to do because you have no creatures in play, and you can't get any creatures in play because the second that you do, I sacrifice one of mine and get rid of it. An absurd card that needs to be dealt with, or the game is basically over for your opponents. An absurd card, and definitely worthy the title of Golden Pick. But now let's want to do tactic number nine to talk about how to put our opponents out of their misery with finish them. That's the tactic's name. Falcon Round Noble, a 2-2 Vampire Noble flying that costs four mana. Whenever it or another creature dies, target player loses one life, and you gain one life. So again, any creature, not just our own, dies, we drain. And that's going to happen quite a lot again with our own creatures. Then we've got Mirkwood Bats. Mean. A 2-3 Flying Bat for four mana. Whenever you create or sacrifice a token, each opponent loses one life. So, every single one of our fungus is essentially, hey, uh, drain opponents each two, drain total six for every single token. Again, get in play, sacrifice it. Absurd. Moving on. Dreadhound, a great one. Six, six, ETBs, mill three. So, again, nice mill effect right there. On top of that, whenever a creature dies or a creature card is put a grave from a library, each opponent loses one life. So, again, our milling can really come in handy with this to just drain our opponents out quite quickly.
But now we've talked about every single non-land card in this deck. Let's quickly go through the lands, and some can even help us descend like these. Blight of Woodland, Sacrifice, and also Ramp to help us go you know, descend too. Evolving Wilds, Tap Sacrifice, go get a basic into play tapped, and also, yeah, uh, descend. Grim Backwoods, a great sacrifice outlet for us. On top of one, I can just tap for a if we need it. Jun Panorama, can all sacrifice, go get one of our lands into play tapped. Riveters Overlook, basically exact same thing when it ETBs though, and we also gain a life, lovely. Squestered Sash, tap for a Colus, pay four, tap sacrifice, mill five, get an artifact back on top of our library if we need to, but again, a lot of descending there. Shire Terrace, pay one, tap sacrifice, get a basic into play tapped, and finally, Tranquil Thicket. Cycle it away for a single green mana. Again, that counts against a permanent. And yeah, there's actually a lot of other lands that can help us descend too. But I just kind of wanted to summarize them with, you know, these examples. So yeah, keep that in mind. But now as this episode is coming to a close, it's time for me to hear from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts are on this deck. All the gross things that you can do with this commander. Absolutely fun things. Well, for you. Sometimes not for your opponents when you're like, yeah, I'll sacrifice your creatures. Thank you. <laughs> Drained you out. <laughs> yeah. I got 40 funguses in a turn. Yeah, quite fun. If you are, you know, excited about this deck, make sure you check out that deck list link in the description below. Comment below. And of course, as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. 